Hi everyone, this is Ray at Whitney Auto in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and this is our 2004 Mazda RX-8. Uh, today, after high demand and lots of emails, we will be looking at how to replace the engine mounts, also how to tell if they're bad along the way. I have been feeling a bit under the weather, so I apologize for my unshaven Eric the car guy look today, uh, but please bear with me, look at the car instead of me. Let's get started, I'll keep it quick. People ask me a lot of the time, how can I tell if my engine mounts are bad? Well, I have a couple quick questions here that will give you an idea of to whether or not you should even be looking at them. The first one is, do you drive an RX-8? You do? Well, if you've never replaced the engine mounts, they might be bad, especially if you're reaching that 60,000 mile mark. Uh, they have a tendency to sag, which we'll look at in just a second. Um, braking completely uh, isn't as common, but it's definitely uh, in the protocol for engine mounts on RX-8s. Uh, the second one is, if you drive an automatic car, you're definitely going to feel it more. If you put the car in reverse and the car shakes real bad, you know, like like this, well, odds are your engine mounts are no good. Uh, if you're experiencing a check engine light flashing, if you're experiencing uh, a hesitation, it's not necessarily related to your engine mounts. However, uh, any hesitation or lack of performance or clunking can definitely be related to your engine mounts. Alright, now your engine mounts are probably going to break in one of two different ways. Either they're just going to wear from age and sag down, or they're going to break apart into two different pieces like this one is. Um, might be kind of hard to tell if your engine mount is sagging if you've never seen it before. Luckily on our Project Dark State we have one side that is completely torn apart, and we have another side that is just sagging. Uh, one thing I want to show you real quick while I have this one out of the car is you can see on this portion here where it has made contact with the metal bracket that goes around it. Now let's take a peek through the wheel well and I'll show you what it looks like both when they're sagging and when they've come apart while they're still installed on the vehicle. Taking a peek here on the driver's side of the vehicle looking through the wheel well uh, originally these vehicles had a rubber shield that would come from this clip to this clip and cover up this area. You can either pull these clips out and remove the shield or just bend it up to take a peek at your engine mount. Uh, as you can see here, it looks visibly lower to me just because I look at these things a lot. Uh, but let's take a peek around the back side here where you can see that the bracket is actually touching the mount. Now here we are. You can see how this bracket is making contact with that mount indicating that this engine mount is completely sagged down. Let's look at the other side. Alright, here we are on the passenger side looking through the wheel well just as we did before. And as you can see, this engine mount is completely broken in two pieces. Uh, this makes it a little more difficult to get out because when you try to loosen this bolt, it's only going to spin. And we may have to remove the whole bracket. Uh, this is more common on the passenger side of the vehicle because as you can see just behind it is your exhaust manifold. So it's subject to a lot more heat. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to be replacing both sides. Now in the interest of cost, we've decided to go with a generic aftermarket engine mount. And looking at the mount, you can see that there's three holes in it. These two mount to the body of the car, and this one's going to mount to the bracket that's mounted to the engine and hold the engine in the car. Uh, before we do anything on this car, however, we're going to spray down those three bolts with some power lube. Trust me, they're probably rusted. If not, they're probably just a little bit brittle, so go ahead and spray them down with some kind of... Uh, WD-40 or rust penetrant. Now I've said in prior videos I have the benefit and the blessing of working in a shop. Uh, I have lifts and air tools at my uh, convenience. Now if you're doing this on the ground with hand tools it's still in, uh, not that bad of a job to do. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to raise the car up on uh, jack stands or on ramps uh, to get it off the ground. You're going to need to not leave the jack underneath the car though because you're going to need it to raise up the engine as I'll show you in just a minute. The tools I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to be using an air gun. You can still use a hand ratchet or a, a wrenches. It's going to be a tight squeeze in there. It's going to be a little bit more. Your forearms are probably going to be tired when you're done, but you can definitely do it. And I'm going to be using this uh, bell housing extension. It's a half inch uh, on one side and three eighths on the output side and a swivel socket with a 14 millimeter head. Now if they've never been replaced before, uh, the bolts uh, especially, you're going to have 14 millimeter head 
bolt. So you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket or 14 millimeter wrench, uh, whatever you can find with your combination that fits there. I would tell you to get one particular kind of socket wrench or, or ratcheting wrench or length, but all wrenches are different. Some will fit better for different people, uh, but regular hand tools can definitely do this job. Now, as you can see, I've put the extension with the swivel socket down onto the center bolt of the mount. Let's go down to the bottom here and look at it. Uh, as you can see, it's sitting on the top. I'm going to break it loose using my air tools. Um, I will advise you that you always want to break loose the center bolt first. If you don't and you take the ones on the side loose first, you'll have a much harder time getting this one out. It may simply tear the rubber right around and then you may have to cut the bolt out. So always try to get this one out first. Now with the center bolt removed, I'm moving on to one of the side bolts and I will remove that using an air tool as well. Now once you get the two bolts out, there's still one nut remaining. I'll do that in just a moment with the same procedure, with the same extension and my same tools. Uh, you'll notice the two bolts are different. One is squared and one is tapered. The tapered one is a body bolt. It will go into the body side on one of the side bolt holes. The square one is going to go into the center of the engine mount. Now I've moved my extension and socket over to the last retaining bolt, which is actually a nut. Uh, it's on the left side there, as you can see. I'm going to put my air tool on it now and back that one out. Alright, so that side is completely unbolted. All three bolts are out and we identified which bolt goes where. Now, I am not yet supporting the engine in any other way. It's simply set on the engine mount, so don't go driving away or anything. Uh, this side was a little more difficult, if you recall. Uh, this mount, uh, it's going to look like this one where it's completely broken in two pieces. Now on the top piece you'll see here that there are four tabs. And you can see where the bracket held it in place. Sometimes these tabs are enough to hold it in place and sometimes they're not, so let's find out what happens. And you can see I've put the extension and socket assembly on the center bolt just as we did on the other side. Let's see if it comes out. Sounds like we got lucky. She's out. Now with the center bolt out, just as with the other side, I'm going to move over to the bolt located towards the rear side of the mount. Again, the tapered bolt will be going into the body of the vehicle and the square bolt will go down the center of the mount. Moving on to the one retaining nut, we have moved our assembly down to the back or the forward side of the mount on the nut. So now on both sides, the engine mount is completely unbolted from the car. The engine's still in the car, and I have not yet supported the engine in any other way. It's simply set in there, and the engine is simply set on top of the mount. Now what I'm going to do right now is raise the car up. So uh, hopefully you've already raised your vehicle up because you don't want to drive it with loose engine mounts in it. Um, this is the part where you're going to want to put it on the jacks or the jack stands. Now, I'm going to put it up in the air. It's going to make it easier for me to make a video on it. Uh, but you can do the same procedure with a regular jack, jack stands, or ramp. Now here we are under the vehicle. Now you should already be on your jack stands or your ramps. Uh, I'm using a screw jack here to raise up the engine. Now you can use a floor jack. Now there isn't a whole lot of room under here to raise up the engine. I try not to push on the front or the rear of the oil pan to not cause a leak. But no matter what you use, if you don't have a nice thick pad on your jack, you're going to want to use just a simple piece of wood. I just have a 2x4 here and it will evenly distribute the weight of the engine over the jack and I can slowly raise up the vehicle. I'm sorry, raise up the engine, and we don't want to go too far. If you start hearing weird noises and seeing your, your engine pull off your jack stand, you've gone too far. Now with the engine raised up slightly, we can take our engine mount. As you can see, it's separated from the bracket here. 
and wiggle it up and out of the vehicle. Also on the other side now, we're just going to lift our engine mount up and out of the vehicle. The engine is being held up by that jack stand. Now that all that's left to do is install our new mounts. Uh, they may be stamped right hand and left hand. If you do have aftermarket mounts, those stampings might not matter, but the OEM mounts are labeled right hand and left hand. So now we're just going to slip our engine mount into place. Now granted these are a bit taller because they have not collapsed. You may have to raise the engine slightly up in order to get them into place. Same on the other side here. To slip it into place. Now that we have our engine mounts in place on both sides, we're going to slowly lower our engine down until we can start the bolts that we removed from the mounts. I recommend before you reinstall the bolts into the mounts that use some kind of anti-seize compound. If you have to replace the nuts or the bolts uh, because they're rusted or you broke them or they're stripped out, uh, the, the size is 10 by 125. Uh, the bolts lengthwise are about uh, two and a half centimeters or about one inch. You can see here the engine is still supported with the screw jack and I've gotten all the bolts started. Now the mount is still loose and the engine's weight is not completely on it. I don't want to tighten down one side engine mount until I've done the other. So I'm going to go over to the other side and get them started next. Okay, now this side is started as well. As you can see, it's still loose. I did have to move my jack stand over slightly to this side to get the bolt holes to line up. It's very important you get these bolts started fully or you will cross thread them and you will have a hard time uh, getting them tapped straight. Now that we have all six of our engine mount bolts started, we can take the screw jack out that's supporting the engine. We're going to do it slowly and we want to make sure that the engine doesn't come down crooked, uh, which would keep the engine mounts from seating properly. After we get the engine mount out, we're going to take a look at both mounts and just make sure they're, they're seated correctly and they look like they're in the right spot. If they aren't, you may need to raise the engine back up, adjust it, and then let the engine back down. Now, just double checking the engine mounts, you can see it looks like it's in the bracket securely uh, that's located on the subframe. The engine mount bolts are still started and it's sitting straight. Let's check the other side. Here on the driver's side, the engine's in the bracket on both sides. It's sitting securely and straight, so now we're ready to tighten up our bolts. Now I'm going to use the same tool combination and tools I use to take out the bolts as I am to put them back in. However, instead of starting with the center bolt as I did when I removed them, I'm going to tighten the outside bolts first. I generally like to tighten the bolt and then the nut. The reason being the, bolt, the, the nut has a stud and it's not going to move at all. If you tighten it down and the bolt hole is a little bit off, it may tweak it a little bit. Uh, so we're usually going to go bolt, nut, and then this one in the, in the center. Uh, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do that. It's the same procedure as when I took them out. I'm just going to have my gun on in instead of out. So I got lucky when the bolt came out of the engine mount uh, that was completely split in two pieces. Uh, it can be a lot more difficult than that. So I'm going to, right after I finish this part, I'm going to go back and show you what you would have to do as far as removing the bracket in order to uh, cut the bolt out if need be. So just stay tuned for that. Um, that being said, we went with the uh, an OEM um, quality aftermarket mount uh, in interest of cost. Uh, we may upgrade to a poly mount in the future. Um, poly mounts can have a little more vibration than the OEM mount and they are uh, more expensive than your cheap aftermarket uh, alternative, uh, which is why we did it because frankly I don't have the money to put into it right now. Um, hopefully the money will come and I can continue to make more videos. Uh, and do some power upgrades on the car. Uh, but if your main interest in replacing your engine mounts is to smooth that rattle and that vibration you have, an OEM mount might be your best bet. Now, I do appreciate the subscriptions to the channel, so as I said, I'm going to continue making RX-8 videos as I have the money to do so. So please subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video if you found it at all helpful or informative, share it if you can. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. Uh, the website's www.whitneyautorepair.com. We're on Facebook. If you're located in Northern Virginia uh, and you have an RX-8 or a Mazda or any car in particular, uh, please check us out. I could definitely use the business. Um, thanks again for watching. And as I said, coming up right now is uh, just a, a brief walkthrough on how to get that bracket out if you're having trouble getting the mount off of the bracket. Thanks again.
Now, as I just said, if you have to remove the bracket, there is a 19 millimeter bolt straight ahead on the top here, and then coming around to the bottom, uh, you have two 19 millimeter bolts right here. It's a very similar design on the other side. None of them are too painful to get to. Now, if you have the engine mount already unbolted, you may be able to remove the bottom half of it. After you remove the bottom half of it, you'll be able to move this bracket outward enough to cut the head off of the bolt, in which case you'd have to replace the bolt. I would advise against using a torch because this bracket is made of very soft metal. You really want to use it by hand and if by some for some reason you have to cut the bolts out you're going to want to use some kind of uh, regular mechanical saw, cut off wheel, bolt cut or something like that. That's about it. Again thanks for watching. It's Ray at Whitney Auto.